So I wanted to make a quick video talking about three, uh, and to be honest, the number three is, uh, we'll see, maybe it's more, maybe it's less, but three or so things, factors that can really play a role in how quickly you recover. So to put it in other words, um, it can be uh, characteristics in people that will allow them to recover quickly. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. So number one, and arguably the most important, uh, we'll see, maybe I change my mind when talking about the other ones, but this was extremely important for me. And it's just, it's a game changer. Um, and it can, it, it, it's just a really important factor. So that would be being willing to get uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm going to say that's the most important. Being willing to be uncomfortable. It's really the unwillingness to be uncomfortable that perpetuates this thing. So I say this all the time. It's all about, or it was for me, not being willing to feel what I needed to feel. To face the uncomfortable stuff. To just stop and sit and, and stop looking for a way out, to stop looking for some magic fix, to stop waiting for somebody, to stop reading online and researching for something that was going to make this all go away. None of that helped me. It all made things worse. But when I became willing to be uncomfortable and willing to just feel what I needed to feel, it really everything started to change because it just the whole mechanism that's keeping you stuck breaks down because it's, it's all of that resistance, that fear of symptoms that's driving this whole thing. It's really the more afraid you are of the symptoms that are going to come on and the beliefs that we have that this is going to bring on symptoms. That's what's driving the whole thing. And when you become just absolutely willing to just feel discomfort it changes everything and it's difficult like I want to make it clear that it's nothing wrong with you if um, or it's not your fault if you really want to avoid the symptoms if you really want to distract yourself if you really want to find a quick way out find something to make you feel better to not want to feel it it's completely natural so this isn't a dig at anybody, um, but it, it's, a, it's something to consider. If you know that you are not willing to get uncomfortable, again, it takes a, a certain amount of getting fed up with the crashes and the symptoms before you are willing to do this. That's how it was for me. I had to keep, I made a whole video about this, hitting rock bottom. It was when I hit rock bottom, I knew I couldn't negotiate anymore. There was no, well, maybe tomorrow, you know, today I don't want to face my shit. Um, I'll rather distract myself and then maybe tomorrow things will just get better. And then it doesn't. And then eventually you, you become willing to get uncomfortable. So, yeah, that's, that's one of the most important factors is as soon as you're willing to be uncomfortable, you will sit with what you need to sit through. And the resistance drops away because you're willing to open to what you need to open to. And to put it in other terms, discomfort is like a little torch shining in your body saying, look here, this is where you need to look. And when we try to run away from that, it's just going to, it's just going to get brighter. It's just going to try and make us more aware. Look here, look here. Um, and then that, that, manifests in more discomfort so the more we look away and we try to run away the more uncomfortable it gets until we fully are willing to feel what we need to feel and the more you're willing to do this the more you get used to opening to the discomfort and you go when you feel that discomfort and you're like go straight to it like remembering the, these words i just said that discomfort is like a little light bulb going off or a little notification saying look yeah this is where you need to go. It's like you don't know what to do. Go to this discomfort. That's where you need to go. It's 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 a little it's a little 
guidance, whatever it is, um, wherever it is in the body. So to put this into practical terms as to how go, to go about this willingness, I would say when you're feeling discomfort, and it can be you know, very frequent for someone who's still struggling a lot, go to what feels the most uncomfortable. Take 10 minutes out of your day, you know, just stop for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever works for you, um, and just sit and, and say, you, I will feel what I need to feel. Um, what is the most uncomfortable thing in my experience? And what happens if I, if I go straight there? If I let it just completely become the center of my experience? If it's the thing that I focus on the most? Um, I really recommend doing, doing that in whatever way works for you. It can really be helpful to do it combined with meditation just to help relax um, to make it easier so you, you're not um, so caught up in the thoughts and the resistance patterns. So maybe you sit and meditate and follow the breath for a couple minutes and then you go straight into the discomfort. But really, you can just drop in. And I really recommend doing this and, and see, see what happens. See what happens. What happens if you go straight to the most uncomfortable part of your experience and you completely let it just be that you welcome it you're like let me feel this discomfort fully and what's going to happen see okay so that's one thing another thing that is really going to determine and it's going to be a real game changer in how quickly someone can recover and how long they can stay stuck and that is a willingness to let go of your beliefs. Because this is all about beliefs. I've said this a few times before. And there's one fundamental belief that can prevent us from seeing through our other beliefs. And that is the belief that I can't challenge my beliefs. I shouldn't challenge my beliefs. It's dangerous. Um, if I don't stick by what I believe in, what's going to happen? Um, so that... that that core belief. And again, it's not your fault if you have this belief or not. All of our beliefs are from conditioning from our past experiences. That No one chose their beliefs. Um, it may feel like you did. And uh, what, now that you have beliefs, you can feel like you're choosing to stick to certain beliefs. But if you notice some of your beliefs right now, when there wasn't a time in the past where you were like, okay, I'm going to decide to have this belief and this belief and that belief. Um, I'm not going to have that belief. I'm going to have this belief. Our beliefs just form along with our conditioning and our experience of the world and our interactions and all of that. So it's, it's not your fault, the beliefs you, you have. But what I will say is that if you are willing to, look, to let go of your beliefs, to notice any beliefs that might be keeping you stuck and to realize that you don't need to, you can just let go of that belief. Um, but as I said, there's a first belief and not everybody has it and that's that's a real important one is whether you believe that you need to cling to your beliefs or if you are willing to let go of your beliefs so yeah just ask yourself what do i believe that might be keeping me stuck and just just be willing to see what what you need to see and again you're gonna it's, it might be uncomfortable it's, it's going back to the previous point. You might need to be willing to be uncomfortable because um, <clears throat> maybe fear comes up. What if I let go of this belief? Um, and often it's going to be the beliefs that make you feel the most uncomfortable when you think of letting go of them, that those are the really sticky ones that you need to let go of. So uh, you believe that, you know, if I do this, this is going to happen. Well, what if that's completely wrong and... It's just because of that belief that that's happening. And it's just beliefs all the way down. It's, um, and as soon as you start being willing to let go of beliefs, they can start to fall. And you, they'll come up, you know, the more you're willing to, to let go of your beliefs, to, to re-examine your beliefs, um, the more you'll notice that, oh, in, in just in daily life, something brings something up. Oh, I actually believe this to be true. But that's just a belief. What, 
what are the associated beliefs or I'm not sure if that's a correct word but yeah associated beliefs oh because I believe this is true I must believe that is true so for example I believe that last time I believe that if I go for a walk over 10 minutes I'm going to have really bad symptoms um, okay so that's a belief oh that's a belief um, I don't know if that's true or not that's just a belief um, and then what's the associated beliefs well, this, so why do you believe that? Well, last time I went for a walk, that happened. Okay, so there's an associated belief. Because something happened once, it's 100% going to happen again. That's the, that, that's the associated belief with, if I walk, this is going to happen. It's only because it happened last time. Or it could be built on something else. You know, I'm not sure exactly how this is for everybody. It's just an example, but... Um, or because this happened to another person in a similar, similar situation to me, so you've read online somewhere that somebody continued to get worse the more they exercised, and then that belief forms in you. So then the associated belief there is what happened to somebody else is definitely going to happen to me. And it can be just this pile of cards where everybody's believing this because of fear of what's happening to somebody else. And... Um, and not being willing to let go of those beliefs. So that is, can be a really important factor in how quickly you can recover and how, how long you can stay stuck is are you willing to let go of your beliefs? You know, maybe you see that somebody recovers really quickly. Um, they did some brain retraining program or they, they suddenly just realized that this was all about their beliefs and their reactions and their... And again, when I'm talking in this way, I'm not putting the blame on anybody. It's just realizing that it's the conditioned responses in our nervous system that can keep us stuck. And once you realize that that's what's keeping you stuck and it's not some um, thing that needs some magic medicine or some scientific breakthrough to fix you, then you can recover really quickly. So maybe so you've seen, you've watched a recovery video and someone said they recovered really quickly because of brain retraining or whatever it was for them. And then you notice that the thoughts come and they say, that can't happen to me or, or that happened to that person because they weren't as sick as me. If you're willing to let go of that belief that that can't happen to you, that can be game changing. So again, that's just an example of a belief keeping you stuck. It's, I'm too sick. That person doesn't have the same symptom as me. So it's not possible for that to happen to me. That's, a, that's another belief. And then an associated belief could be, I have to have exactly the same symptoms as anybody else for what worked for them to work for me. Um, and that's never going to happen. You, maybe you can find someone with very similar symptoms, um, but it's always going to be slightly different just because of the way our bodies are different, our nervous systems are different, our conditioning is different. The things we do is different. Like somebody might be very active and they notice symptoms in different areas. It's just completely different. So all of these beliefs can keep you stuck. And as soon as you become willing to, what if I don't know anything? <laughs> what if all of these beliefs... Again, you didn't choose to have these beliefs, but what if these beliefs that, are, that I now have are not true? What if I just let go of them? Um, and it's not, maybe things don't change overnight. It didn't for me. It didn't change like that. But I started becoming willing to challenge myself to slowly realize how I could have been keeping myself stuck. And the more I was willing to let go of all of those beliefs and uh, to try things and then maybe you know, there was things that would happen. So like a crash would happen and, and then you could want to cling to the old beliefs. Oh, look, this just happened. But as I've said, that's a natural part of the recovery process. So again, it's, um, it doesn't necessarily happen overnight, but it, it can really change how long you can stay stuck with this as soon as you become willing to, to realize, you know what, I can just let go of my beliefs. Because as soon as we're clinging to these identities, these beliefs, you don't want to let go of them um, it's, it's just keeping yourself stuck. You know, there's no consequences. And it can be scary. Like, speaking like this can bring up fear and say, this is wrong. This is wrong. You can't, you can't just let go of your beliefs, all your beliefs. And if it does bring up fear, that's completely natural. It's because we've tied our, identi our identity to these beliefs. If we let go of it, the mind, the ego structures are like, 
th- th- there's a natural defense mechanism in it that makes it like, no, don't, don't do that. Don't look there. Don't, don't, don't let go of those beliefs. Uh, but when you actually do, it's not what the mind says it's going to be. So if this is bringing up fear in you, if this is making you uncomfortable, um, that's not, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just, it's just how this is. <laughs> it's the structure of our minds. So along those lines, we could say number three, an important factor in how quickly you can recover is just letting go in general. So letting go of beliefs, letting go of your uh, trying to make things a certain way, letting go of how things should be, letting go of a future that you imagined that this is now getting in the way of, letting go of trying to create, recreate the life you had before all of this. It's not to say that you can never have a future and do the things you want to, or you can never have a, a life similar to the one you had before, but it's the attachment to those things that can be really make, make your life hell. And that's what it was for me. The more I really wanted life to be the way it used to, and again, the life the way it used to wasn't as good as the mind was making it out to be. You know, the thoughts were like, oh, if only I could go back to having a relationship again and having, um, you know, being busy with exercise and all of that. But if you put me back in that time and I was being 100% honest with myself, in those moments, I wasn't 100% happy. In those times, in the time before the chronic illness, I was imagining a future where I was happy. Okay, you know, life's all right right now, but imagine when I have this, imagine when I have that, that's when life's going to be good. Um, so as as soon as you're willing to let go of trying to make life the way it was, trying to make life anything other than it is, that can be incredibly powerful. What if this is just how it is for now? What if I just accept this moment exactly as it is? I don't try to make it any different. What if I, I don't try to make this any way? I don't refer to any thought of past and future. What is, what is here then? I mean, you can sit with this, you can do this with meditation practice and it can be incredibly powerful. It can become a form of inquiry. You can be like, what is here that has got nothing to do with past and future? Because whenever we're in past or future, we're in thoughts. We're not here. Uh, And thoughts can be what is happening right now. So, So what's happening right now is that thought of past and future. But the content of the thought of the past and the future, that's not what's happening right now. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense. It can maybe sound quite confusing. Let's say those are the three things. I said I was going to say three things, so there we go. I did, while I was talking, something else popped into my mind as, okay, I just thought of a couple more points. Uh, maybe they're not singular points on their own, but just a few other factors that can really affect your speed in recovery. And again, it's not about everyone's going to recover at a different pace. It's not like, how can I make myself recover as fast as possible? But it's just, Certain things can keep you stuck for longer. And if you're willing to be honest with yourself, look at yourself and um, be honest with yourself. What is keeping me stuck? What is the cost of holding on to that? Can I let go of it? It can really change. So some other things are be willing to trust your body and stop trying to fix it. That was powerful for me. And I first came across that from listening to somebody else's recovery story where they mentioned that and it really resonated with me. The body's functioning on its own. There's so much going on that you're not in control of. What's actually happening, what was happening in my illness was there was this mind that was trying to fix this problem that was just me being unwilling to face what I needed to face was getting in the way of everything. And the body was like, piss off. (laughs) Maybe I'm just like personifying it here, but um, yeah, really just trusting you don't need to fix your body. It was really the more I try to fix everything, try to make symptoms go away, try to imagine, it was again imagining a a future where I didn't have to face anything uncomfortable. That's what it was. It was like, there's something fundamentally wrong here because I'm feeling so uncomfortable and obviously it got worse and worse and worse. I got to the point where I was having really horrific symptoms, but it was all stemming from this fighting, feeling what I needed to feel. Um, And imagining that one day I would wake up and just feel awesome. But that only happened, and again, some days I wake up now and I don't feel awesome, but then I'll sit, um, or maybe I won't sit, like sometimes I try to distract myself, 
and because I'm, I'm not willing to fail, but it'll eventually it will build up to the point where I'm like, what am I avoiding? What do I not want to feel? What am I resisting? Yeah, just sitting and welcoming the most uncomfortable thing in your experience is so powerful. It's incredible how much it can change. Um, and, and let's say another here, uh, uh, I don't know where we are, four or five factors that can help you recover quickly authenticity was a game changer for me so we can t use other words that kind of mean the same thing honesty and sincerity but with yourself that's where it starts um, if you're not being authentic with yourself you're not being authentic with others um, so just radical authenticity just just be 100% honest with yourself be sincere don't try to pretend you're feeling how you're not that's just another form of resistance just, you know, you wake up and specifically if you're into a lot of brain retraining, positive thinking, you can try to bypass what you're feeling. And it's again, I, I was doing this for a long time until I realized that that was keeping me stuck. And then when I learned to be really authentic with myself, this is what I'm feeling and it's okay. I'm feeling grief. I'm feeling shame. I'm feeling guilt. I'm feeling fear. I'm feeling unhappy. Don't try to pretend you're not. Don't try to say to yourself, that's not there. You know, I'm happy. Um, I'm feeling strong. Um, you know, maybe that can play a role for a while, but eventually for myself, speaking from my experience here, learning to be radically authentic was a game changer. It's again, it's about resistance or avoidance. It's just feel exactly how you are because it's as soon as we decide, we're trying to pick and choose what's a good experience or what's a bad experience and trying to get more good experiences than bad experiences. But emotions, experience comes and goes, emotions come and go. Um, it's all kind of unfolding on its own. And then we try to say, that's a good one, I want more of that. But, but then it's past and now you, you, you're trying to cling to making yourself feel a certain way again. Or this is bad, I don't want to feel this, how can I get rid of this as fast as possible? I'm happy, I'm... I'm healthy, whatever. As soon as you can just be authentic with yourself and uh, just be like, this is how I'm feeling and that's completely okay. There's nothing wrong with feeling negative emotions. It's emotional repression that is so uncomfortable. It's the more, and we've all learned this from just our conditioning growing up and that's how society is at large. And again, it's no one's fault. It's, it's, we're all just learning from each other. There's no one on top saying, hey, do this, do this, do this. But we've, we've learned as a society to repress certain emotions and that can be hella uncomfortable. And then these emotions need to be processed. They need to be felt. And it can get really uncomfortable the more you try to repress it. So as soon as you're authentic and you're just willing to feel and there's an emotion and it's completely okay to just let guilt be there, let shame be there. Those are difficult emotions for a lot of people. The first time you start to do this, it can be uncomfortable to feel shame, guilt, whatever it is, fear. You know, for different people, it's going to be different things. Anger, sadness, frustration, irritation, all of these things, if they're there, if they come into your experience, just let them be there. You don't need to pretend that it's not there. This doesn't mean going and acting on these emotions because that's actually repressing the emotions more. You know, if, if the first thing that comes to mind, if I say, be willing to feel your anger um, and, and you, you have thoughts saying, well, if I do that, I'm going to act out in anger at everybody. And maybe you've seen people act out in anger and that makes you scared of feeling anger. Um, it, this can be anything um, depending on your past experiences. But what actually happens when somebody's acting out in anger and violence because of anger, it's because they're so unwilling to feel their emotions because they don't want to feel that anger they then, to repress it, they then act out in rage and, and do something violent because they weren't willing to feel that emotion. So, yeah, if the mind says something like, I can't feel that emotion, it's, it's going to make me behave in a bad way or something like that, that's just thoughts. Um, that's not feeling the emotion. If you, if you really just feel the emotion, whatever it is, welcome it. I spoke about this in my last video, in the last half of the video, I was kind of talking through the process of 
welcoming whatever it is an experience that wants to be there just completely welcome it with open arms give it space and you'll be surprised at how much quicker emotions change when you do things like this so if you just let emotion completely express itself and, and just you know take over your present experience and, and just feel the real like go to the root of the emotion feel the sensations not just in the thoughts about it uh, you know maybe something happened at work and this person was such a bad person and they're so you know they um, how could they do that to me all of that if you just go to, how does that make you feel in the body what are you feeling there and you and you just uh, the thoughts can be there it's fine the thoughts can run they can be there but get into the sensation and then you'll be surprised at how much quicker these emotions change as opposed to when we're repressing them and we don't want to feel them then it can stick around because it needs to be felt whether you want to or not it's going to be there so just 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 welcome it um, and that's a whole thing on its own emotion work but it's not complicated it can really just be a willingness to feel welcome whatever comes up and it's powerful it's really a game changer when you so it all this all kind of ties in together so we, we can talk call it different things but it's all about willing to feel um, willing to let go being authentic and not and just welcoming and not resisting just welcoming what's in experience and whatever you're feeling you just just welcome it if you wake up and you feel like shit what am I feeling? What do I not want to feel? Just welcome it. So that's a longer video than I was expecting to make. But yeah, I think that's all really important. So let me know uh, how this goes for you if, um, if it helps. And um, best of luck. It can be, this can be difficult work. Uh, so again, just be kind to yourself. And uh, yeah, it's all about welcoming. You know, just uh, if you're struggling, that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> it's difficult. And maybe for some times you'll resist and you will distract yourself and you will avoid doing the work until you can't and then you come back to it. And that's fine. I've done it. I do it this time. I went through a period recently where I was distracting myself a lot and then I started meditating a lot again the last few days and it was just a game changer. But I can't. Sometimes I'm going to distract myself, sometimes I'm not. Um, but there is always a choice, right? Um, so a little bit paradoxical, um, but just... Don't be too hard on yourself and best of luck.